You think the West can't do better than that, Owen? Well, they've got a very good base section, mine. But no top tenors, that's for sure. Hi guys and welcome back and today we will get on with building the diorama base for the Zulu movie diorama, the Rocks Drift Men of Harlech scene and also the display stand that that base will sit on. So visible in the scene in the very foreground is guys hiding behind a wagon that is covered in sandbags. Now I've got no idea where I got this wagon from. I want to say that it's a Perry Miniatures one, so metal with a resin bed, but I'm not 100% sure, and I can't find where I poured it from. So construction is very straightforward. Just need some super glue or some um, CA glue to stick the metal to the metal and the metal to the resin. doesn't come with instructions, but it's not rocket science to work out where the very few pieces all go together. Now you've seen me make these frames for the diorama base many times, so it's all very straightforward, a bit of Tasmanian pine and that um, foam core plastic. This time instead of using balsa I used basswood and I did have visions of cutting this out on my wife's cricket cutting machine but technical issues and a lack of skill conspired to stop me from doing that but since I was just making a few straight cuts I thought I'd go for it myself and my kids got me this Tamiya saw which is an ultra fine blade with uh, very fine teeth absolutely magnificent for this it doesn't flex like my old one did and if you take your time and on a secure surface, which I wasn't quite all the pieces together, it gives you a really, really nice cut. So I wanted the best wood because I wanted to be able to stain it rather than paint it. And I wanted to see the grain come through, which of course, as we all know, you don't get from balsa wood. So I'm on a bit of a secret mission here. I'm not going to tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing now. It only runs for a minute, so don't panic. And then we get back into the construction. Interested to hear if you've got any comments or theories about why I'm doing this. Anyway, back to the box. So just using some of the Elmer's white glue and just build a bit of a framework inside to make sure it all stayed square and level, which I'm always happy about when I achieve levelness. And then I made a base out of the plastic foam core, but it's not foam core, it's the plastic core. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. I made a base that had a inset in it so that it would sit snugly inside the frame and the actual diorama base itself I could then have above the display box if that makes sense it'll make more sense when you actually see it full disclosure here I used the Revell contactor professional to glue these two bits of plastic together and came back the next day and they were not glued together it hadn't done anything at all and I think I then went to using a two-part epoxy glue like Araldite or something of that nature. So there it is actually glued together and dry and just test fitting it. So it sits in nicely, but just a little bit of left and right play, not too much up and down. So in the process of putting on the basswood edging, because I wanted the uh, ability to be able to stain that and protect it as well, I also put a couple of shivs, I think the word is shivs, or I might just be making that up, on the inside of the display stand box itself. So that just gave us a slightly little better friction fittage when the diorama base slots in.
So the next bit is pretty self-explanatory. It's a bit of the white glue down on the base, which I find just helps the DAS modeling clay to get better grippage and sort of smooth it out with my fingers, do a little bit of toothbrush work to roughen up the surface. And then I thought with this one, I might just throw a little bit of fine ballast on there as well knowing full well that a large amount of it will come off which is fine by me just to do something a little bit different so i will leave you with some music and a bit of a break from my voice for a few seconds and i'll be back in a tick And happily for you guys, the next bit is equally as self-explanatory. So just cleaning up the display stand now, getting preparation for staining and varnishing. So just sanding, 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 sanding. Uh, give it a good clean after that. Then you'll see me put the stain on. So paint that on and then rub it off pretty much straight away. And then finally the clear varnish and the final results of that, which I was really happy that I chose to use the basswood instead of balsa wood. I think it's come up pretty well. So again, bit of music and uh, I'll be back in the next section. On with the show and had to make a lot of mealy bags and mealy bags are surprisingly similar to sandbags except rather than being full of sand they're full of mealy and I'm not 100% sure I really know what mealy is but when I googled it it looks like it's some sort of corn or maize so I'll stick with that and it sort of looked uh, a little bit corn like in the movie when the bags were cracked open or sliced open with the bullets or the ascendies so we'll stick to that. Anyway, I made a little template here to get the thickness of the what I'm using initially is DAS clay and just rolled it out with a brass rod. A bit soft, need to persevere for a while, but fundamentally get it into the right thickness. And then I printed these um, 3D sandbags, or mealy bags, so I was confident they were the right size for the scale because I actually got them from Shapeways I think it was or my mini factory but obviously you're not flexible and I didn't have the mental capacity or the skills to design the entire mealy bag wall in the CAD software so I went for a hybrid of well I know these are the right size so I'll print some of these out and just use them as a guide to get the size right. So cutting them all up into their individual ones, and they're not all 100% identical, but I guess mealy bags aren't all 100% identical, depending upon how much mealy they have in them. But they're all there or thereabouts. And then a nice picture of the back of my hand is I squeeze the ends together a little bit to try and start to form the broad shape of the bag. 
and then just sort of flatten them down a little bit with my sponge. Use my silicone sculpting tip to take the squareness out of the bottom edge. And then not really all that complicated, a bit of the white glue on the base and just start the process. It is tedious, but it has to be done. There's no one else. So I had designed and printed out some ammo boxes and in fact I probably I really overcooked this in the in the design because I'm good at doing boxes because they're just flat planes and flat surfaces. So I had this in the 3D software with the lid that actually slid in and out on little tracks and all that sort of stuff and that's fabulous when you can zoom in in the CAD software and everything's huge and I of course you can forget that when you print it out it, uh, it doesn't look anything like it does. So anyway starting to do a bit of a mock-up here you can see there's a couple of rogue figures in situ that aren't strictly speaking in the scene but I wanted to play a homage to the chap in the front who gets a mouthful of mealy and the guy at the back is a probably a hybrid of the guy who's handing out ammunition but I wanted to include the flag as well because I think the flag looks really cool and I know I wasn't in the scene but it's my dio and I wanted the goddamn flag so I wanted some texture on the top of the sandbags and the DAS clay just doesn't hold it. So I went a bit experimental a little bit. So in some instances, you'll see the this is the milliput, which I think probably took the impression best of all. And on the nine foot high wall at the back, the redoubt, I used a combination of this and uh, also just the Aves two part. Whilst it does take the impression I think the milliput actually was the best and as you can see here just poking in a few bullet holes or some senji scratches or the like uh, and then to get because I was sick of making bags I used the 3D printed sandbags on the very lowest rung for the firing step on the inside because I was over it. So time to take the bases off because I need to start positioning these guys most of them on the firing step. And in taking the bases off, I left a bit of a plug of the plastic down the bottom. And that was simply so I had something more than just the sole of their shoe to try and register with the top of the sandbag or the top of the mealy bag, if that makes sense. So kick off the painting with some surface primer. So this is the Vallejo Black surface primer, which I really like. And um, I took this outside to do because uh, it was a pleasant afternoon. That's why the lighting looks a little bit different. And I got sent by the good folks at Neat and Handy this fantastic little airbrush. And it's all built into the handle, the compressor. So there's no cables. It charges off a rechargeable battery. And I'm testing it pretty thoroughly before I do a review. So this is the first time I've used it. But uh, I'd have to say my first exposure to it was fantastic. So there'll be some subliminal product placement throughout the rest of this video as I use it to paint the dio base and do the varnishing and, and other bits and pieces. But uh, I'd have to say at first blush, very easy to use, super, super simple to clean. And, um, yeah, no, no cord. So the fact you can just pick up and, and grab your stuff and go outside if you need to, especially if you're painting with enamels, it, uh, it, it seemed really, really good. So anyway, painting, I don't really need to explain. You can see what I'm doing. So I might wake up some music, give you a break from my voice, which would be understandably deserved, and uh, wander back when something uh, a little bit more worthy of explanation starts happening.
So once all that had been done and sealed uh, with a gloss varnish, came back in with a oil wash just to unify everything and then used a wide-ranging selection of pastels to bring the ground into a sort of consistent and non-uniform but uniformed-looking set of tones. So on with a bit bits and bobs, and I needed a few Zulu Asenjis and shields lying around. Uh, so I just made these straight from wire and smacked them down with the, the hammer to get the blade. I found this in the old iPhone earphones to get some thin wire or string. And then made out of the Aves two-part epoxy the shield facings. So... All a bit rustic, but it is all rustic stuff that the Zulus had made. And uh, I wanted to keep it that sort of, I didn't want it to, I I could have 3D printed these, but then I thought they would have been too perfect and I wanted them to, to be imperfect, if that makes sense. So I 3D printed off a plaque and starting to learn a little bit. So the bottom layers, you typically have to cure them for longer so they can become a little bit thicker and harder and just less pleasant to work with. So I made that bottom layer in the software wider and longer. So there was a nice sort of lip for me to cut off using my new Tamiya saw and just giving these a bit of a sand and making sure they were all nice and squared up. <laughs> how subliminal that actually was. Everything had gone well. I painted it and put in the movie poster on the little rose part. So I was happy. It was all nice and level because what I wanted to do now was do a pour of black resin, uh, just a shallow pour to bring the back up and have it all nice and smooth. And then I do a gloss resin over the top of that. Now I'm sharing this with you because I said right from the start of setting this channel up, I'd show the good with the bad. Well, it doesn't get much worse than this. So this is a real example of what not to do. So I mix some black acrylic paint in with the, well, what I thought was the clear resin, but subsequent investigations proved that it wasn't in fact the clear resin that I'd used. I had used resin that dries white, which sort of explains why things started to go a little bit pear-shaped, but there's, a, there's some other resins as well. So that's very viscous, which I, was what I was looking for. So I thought, well, that should pour very nicely. And I'm not sure because perhaps it was the small quantity that I had put together 
and perhaps I was a little bit too slow to get it poured, but it wasn't as viscous as I thought it would be when it actually started going in. But I thought it would self-level and it wasn't really doing that. So I got my razor blade and I thought, well, this is all right. I can fix this. And my initial thoughts were, oh, actually, I am fixing this. This is coming out okay. And there I should have stopped. But I went once to the well and took a big chunk out of the middle, which it didn't need removed. So then I tried to pour some more in. And as you can see, now it's really not viscous and it's starting to go well and truly off. And I could tell that because the, the cup was hot. And then it all just goes horribly wrong. Um, and I think you can almost see the moment here where I realize that eh, I'm screwed. I think it's about there. Eh, I'm screwed. I got the torch out and tried to burn it, but that didn't work. And it didn't go, it didn't go gloss black anyway because it tried to turn white. And so I got this sort of gray cock up um, outcome. So I won't show you the good one. You can see that in the final reveal. And I changed my mind about the whole use of resin in that. So anyway, we'll come back with the final reveal in just a tick. All right, so that's it, guys. We do the final reveal now. A couple of laps on the magic spinning wheel and then some still photos. All that's left to do now is to whack the figures in and put a little bit more pastel dusting around to blend them in with the works, and we'll be good to go. And believe it or not, that's all filmed and finished, and I've just got to do some audio for that, so that should be out pretty quickly after this one. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Good fun to make, except for the hundreds of mealy bags, which I could have done without. So take care all, and I'll pop back in to say goodbye in a sec. So there we go. That's it. As I said, good fun to make. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. Like, subscribe, share, and as you know, look forward to reading your comments. Take care, everyone, and I will catch you in the next one.